will see how we have incorporated topography derived data in order to change what I was trained over 20 years ago and what is currently practiced globally as the golden standard for refraction used in laser corrections. Throughout the world, most of our laser corrections are based on the clinical refraction. So either the dry or the psychophysical refraction. And we base these measurements uh, and we place them into our lasers in regard to a sphere, myopia, cylinder, and its axis. Well, I'm here to show you some surprises and how we're using the topography guided data in order to refine these refractions. And we have found that these uh, altered, customized, manipulated data are giving us invariably one to two lines better visual acuities postoperatively. So not only topography is able to normalize the cornea at its best through the visual axis that the patient is using, but the topography is the most reliable predictor of what is the actual astigmatism of that patient. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about why is it that the refractive topography or rather the refractive cylinder and the uh, placido-derived topography data may not be similar uh, in all patients. And we can see on this placido topography is the fact that it has some angle kappa. The pupillary aperture does not coincide with the cornea apex. Very regular astigmatism. And on the treatment plan, uh, as we can see here on our uh, multiple refractions, we have a minus 475, minus 2 at uh, 35 degrees of the refraction. We have the patient is wearing a minus 575, minus 175 at 20 degrees. Uh, the uh, manifest is minus 475, minus 225 at 30, so very close to the order refraction. The psychologic refraction is minus 475, minus 2 at 30, okay. almost the same with the dry manifest. The order refraction at the psychoplegia is minus 4.5, minus 2 at 33. And very importantly, the wavefront measurement is minus 5, minus 265 at 175 degrees. So if we take the topography data seen here and we incorporate it into a treatment, we can see how the topographer is uh, showing us, let's go and see what the treatment will look like in its planning. And we're, see, we're going to see here that uh, our clinical is 475 minus 2 at 30, but the topographer, of course, it cannot read sphere. So its uh, refraction is minus 270, uh, 246 at 21 degrees. And this is what we actually decided to do here uh, is the fact to use the topography derived cylinder. Uh, we see that the angle kappa here is giving us this trifold direction. I'm going to try and neutralize it. Let's see, Flavia. It only needs about a minus 0.25 to neutralize. So we're going to add this to our refraction. So our refraction will be instead of minus 475, it will be minus 5. And then our cylinder will be minus 2, the refractive cylinder, but not at 30 degrees, it will be at 21 degrees. So this is our final correction minus 5, minus 2, at 21 degrees, correcting triangle kappa. You can see here that the pupillary aperture is eccentric to the center of the ablation in order to compensate for the angle kappa that we invariably see even in these low or moderate miles. This is some very regular astigmatism. Everything's perfect, right? But we have angle kappa here as well. You can see the XY deviation for the pupil to the cornea apex is 0 0.03 millimeters. Uh, on the x-axis, not much, 30 microns, but on the y-axis, we're 0 0.28 millimeters. This is 280 microns. We centered on the vertical axis, and you can see the topographer trying to compensate for this. The sphere here is minus, uh, clinically measured to be minus uh, uh, five and a half, with a stigmatism of one after at five degrees. The topographer says differently. It wants to correct minus 173 diopters at 177 degrees. So we're going to arbitrarily increase the cylinder from one diopter to a diopter and a half, 
at the axis of topographic cylinder, and we're going to take this extra half diopter cylinder out of the sphere, uh, which will make uh, our topographic neutralization become zero. So we're going to add here the minus five and a half of our clinical refraction wall, after all. So we're going to do minus five and a half, minus one and a half, at 177 degrees, instead of the clinical refraction, which is a combination, as we talked about before, of the wearing, manifest dry, cyclo uh, refraction, and wavefront refraction. Uh, and we're going to increase cylinder here, and again, change the axis of the cylinder to the topographic axis, and also compensate for angle cap. So let's see our last case. Of course, the majority cases uh, are going to be like the one we just saw. Uh, the topography customized platform will suggest treating more cylinder than we're refracting. And we know this is happening because there's accommodated uh, cylinder from the lens of the eye neutralizing the topographic cylinder. But we know accommodating cylinder is not stable and with time will go away and we want to treat the uh, cornea cylinder with the topography guided uh, ablations in order to get a maximum refractive effect. So here we're going to see the opposite. You're going to see a refractive cylinder of 1.25 diopters at 80 degrees and 6.5 diopters for myopia. And this is the topography map which suggests we only treat minus 0.25 of cylinder at 80 degrees. So we're going to break protocol here, and we're not going to treat based on the clinical refraction, but we're going to treat based on the topographic cylinder. So we're going to reduce the cylinder from 125 to 0 0.5 at 80 degrees, and then we're going to compensate the sphere accordingly. So the sphere will go from 6.5 to 675. So instead of treating 6.5 uh, sphere, we're going to treat 675 trying to uh, work with a similar spherical colon of the clinical refraction, but obeying the topographic suggested data as far as amount of cylinder and axis. So this is an example where we're dramatically reducing the topographic, uh, the refractive cylinder to manage the topographic cylinder. We're cutting 0.75 diopters of cylinder, and we're compensating that by increasing the sphere by the appropriate amount. Uh, so this is our uh, technique. These are the lessons we've learned this last year from incorporating topographic uh, guided data into refining our clinical refraction.